Well, hello everyone. Here we are today for our class number two about how to use crystals and all the secrets about crystal technology. I'm here today with Dan Willis. Dan, how are you? I am excellent. Thank you. Uh, I'm very excited to do this highly important class on clearing the crystal. Last time uh, on our class number one, we helped everyone to choose the right crystal. So it was very informative. And uh, could you remind us what were the point more or less uh, about the, the, the general lines, how to pick the right crystal? Yes, you know, so many things have corroborated between Dr. Marcel Vogel, who is a pioneer in this crystal science, and our scientist friend, John Hanredion. Um, what uh, Marcel, in experimenting, going from different sides of crystals from four on up, uh, we found out that the six-sided crystal that was cut in alignment with the hexagonal core of the lattice structure that as it grows in nature had a special attribute to it and that um, the uh, vortexial spin actually decreased after 24 sides according to Jenham. so everybody that has a vocal crystal that has you know from four sides to 24 sides they all work. They work for healing crystals, as Jen Hanna said, that uses the radiance. But the six-sided, as they use on the planet Era, <laughs> and, um, has this attribute to access the eye of the crystal. And that we'll get into in a future class, how to fully utilize that. But... Um, one thing that uh, both Jen Hanredion and Marcel stressed was highly important. You know, once you once you have a crystal, you don't want to use it until it's absolutely cleared of all previous imprints. Um, this is something that uh, both Jen Han and uh, Marcel stressed. Yeah, 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 and that's why we're doing today the uh, class on clearing a crystal because before starting any work with a crystal you need to make sure that the crystal doesn't have any emotional imprint energetic imprint uh they, they always have you know crystals take and absorb energies and they process it and sometimes you, you don't know where the crystals come from uh, they may have been in the hands of a vendor who has problems who was very stressed and the crystal has caught his stress or the way it was extracted you know um was, was particular so when you acquire a crystal you need to make sure there's nothing imprinted in it that is that is um bothering the crystal stressing it so today we're going to tell you how to do that <laughs> how to do that so um i let yes, you continue so then we're going the best information available from the highest level scientist on the planet Terra and also uh, a highly advanced scientist on the, uh, well, he's currently working on Mars, but on the planet Terra. <laughs> <laughs> so um, these are the words of uh, Dr. Marcel Vogel regarding the clearing of crystal. Um, Marcel said, when you first acquire a crystal, it needs to be cleared of any influences that might be harmful or limiting to you. Over the years of research, two basic methods have been found to effectively clear a crystal. The first was to use a bulk magnetic demagnetizer. The field generated by this instrument will strip a crystal completely. A preferable method is to use your own breath and consciousness. To release or clear energies in a crystal, hold the crystal, the tips of the crystal, between the thumb and second finger. With your other hand, hold the opposing sides of the body of the crystal. Slowly breathe in with a thought to clear the crystal of any harmful limiting influences. 
one breath fully inhale hold for one or two seconds and then forcefully exhale the breath in a short burst or pulse this process of pulsing is somewhat like sneezing or a single round of yogic breath of fire it's like like that repeat this process for each pair of facets on the body of the crystal a six-sided for example would be three times rotate and rotate there are ineffective methods of clearing a crystal that marcel went over despite what many have indicated please never use salt to clear your crystal we have found that in addition to the difficulties this may create for your crystal it has no clearing capacity at all in addition it creates a dependence on an external agent for a task that can easily be done with your own consciousness it is important to realize that you are at source with this work and that your consciousness is more powerful agent than salt some dynamics uh, the same dynamics apply to other ritualistic methods offered by many. Passing the crystal through smoke or burning sage, leaving the crystal out in moonlight, burying the crystal in the earth for a period of time. These methods that we are asked about regularly, and our research shows that none of these have any efficacy. An exception to this would be if you have a very strong belief in the ritual. Your belief or intention will act to clear the crystal, not the ritual itself. It is important to understand that you are who empower the ritual. Although the last three methods do not serve to clear the crystal, they don't harm the crystal. Using sea salt, on the contrary, can be harmful. The salt water solution can leave a film on the surface of the crystal and will reduce the efficacy of the charge transfer. Marcel, as Jen Han has always said, the importance of love. He says, it is the loving intention that creates the charge to clear the crystal and the breath that carries it. You are its source. And then Jen Han Redion shared his information on clearing the crystal. Yes, exactly. That that's what is amazing is that these two men, Marcel and Jen Han, share very complementary and similar um, wisdom and experience and knowledge on crystals. And Jen Han um, said, "I quote him: Breath carries memories and thoughts. It also carries the energy of a being, not only the encoding of its vehicle DNA, but as well the encoding of the soul." When you project breath, you also project by superimposing a parcel of the soul being, hence a fragment of one's consciousness. And um, so I, um, I would add as well uh, that a crystal must be empty, pure and clear. And that's very important. And what that this is what Jen Han says about this particular point. Quoting Jen Han, the energy force that is living manifestation of source is being impregnated inside the crystal, but beware, the crystal must be empty. This means no residual emotion imprint, parasiting or charge. The crystal must be pure and clear from any form of energy or consciousness even. I wouldn't say that at this stage, the crystal is really empty because it carries its frequency imprint. But I mean empty from anything that is not the original frequency signature of the crystal. In order to perform this action, embedding a fractal of your consciousness in a dynamic projection into the crystal, the receptacle must be pristine, pure. There are methods of purification I can tell about. The best is to run the crystal through a sound scan. You need instruments that create a high frequency sound or trained persons can clear a crystal with their own consciousness. These individuals have reached a clear state of mind. End of quote. 
Yes. Um, I asked John Han about this and stating that he says, quote, trained persons can clear crystal with their own consciousness and uh, these individuals have reached a, quote, clear state of mind. I ask him, is it sufficient that a person who sets their intention to clear the crystal along with the pulse breath, or is more required? Jenhan replied by saying, a clear state of mind is a mind with no parasitic thoughts. A mind as clear as crystal or pure spring water. A mind in higher frequency content and in perfect harmony with the universe and not clear a crystal with your mind if your mind is troubled you project thought into the crystal instead i mentioned to him that dr marcel vogel was able to measure the clearing with intention in water and breath pulse he did this with the uh, ultraviolet spectrophotometer was able to measure the valence bands and see them disappear using the breath or a magnetic eraser i asked would either the intention of pulsed breath or the magnetic eraser suffice in clearing the crystal for our purposes or do you have another recommendation Jen Han says the mind is enough if you do not have technology but your mind must be as clear as spring water and empty of any thought. Otherwise, the clearing doesn't work. You just transfer other thoughts into the crystal. I then ask him, will a strong alternating 60 times per second magnetic field, an example, a uh, magnetic bulk eraser, serve to clear the crystal? Jen Han replied by saying, a powerful magnetic field can clear a crystal because it deprograms it. The crystal is then empty of any programming. It sounds like it can work. Good device. I like it with mine better. <laughs> or I like it better with mine, he says. Uh, which is interesting because he's corroborating here with Dr. Marcel Vogel found that the magnetic bulk eraser was able to do this. I also asked Jen Hanna, I said, is there a frequency we can project at the crystal to facilitate this clearing? Jen Han responded with, 4096 hertz um uh, regarding the ineffective methods you know the folklore that have been carried on that people <laughs> perpetuate yeah. uh just to get this clear <laughs> um dr marcel vogel did not believe that the following methods were able to effectively clear the crystal and i gave him a long list and i asked if he concurred and uh Elena, yeah. you uh yeah, yeah. Jen, Han, Jen Han uh gave his own uh, interpretation and knowledge about this this list of um uh different methods that are common in the folklore as we say so this is what Jen Han replied quoting him soaking in salt water it does not remove a programming it cleanses low frequency imprints such as low emotional charges or stress due to the cutting and handling. Exposing to moonlight. Janan says it does not remove a programming. It cleanses same as above. Smudging with sage. Janan says it does not remove a programming. It, I do not know the properties of this herb, but my guess is that it may only cleanse the aura of the crystal, not the inside. Smoke doesn't go inside of a crystal, nor water, nor salt, and so on. Only sound, light, consciousness, vibrations, magnetic fields, and electrical pulses can go through a crystal, so it can properly cleanse and deprogram a crystal. Then, exposing to sunlight, Jen Han says, it does not remove a programming. Sun radiations nourish the crystal and the crystal harvests frill from the sun when activated. Photonic light clears impurity in the crystal. Light also goes through it because a quartz crystal is solid light. So this one is yes, no, but yes, that means it works in certain cases. 
carrying on, burying them in the ground. Jen Han says, it does not remove a programming and is laughing. <laughs> well, um, I don't know what it cleanses, but this may be related to what you call on Terra magic rites. I believe the magnetism of the planet that activates the mineral particles present in the natural soil can affect positively a crystal to change the electrical charge. I trust that the crystal may enjoy it, but not for too long. Crystals need light. Some crystals can soak in soil if it is too rich in iron and tint it yellow or brown. You do not want this to happen. The list goes on. Visualizing it is as clear. Jenhan says it can remove a programming if you put the intention of clearing it from all programming. The intention. Cleanses, of course, as well. Consciousness is the most powerful tool in this universe to affect the matrix of things. Chanting sacred sounds, Jen Han says, it does not remove a programming unless the sound of the voice carries the intention above. Voice carries fractals of consciousness. Voice is a car carrier that affects the matrix. Chanting without intention consciousness does not deprogram a crystal. It must not be a passive chant, but an active chant. And the last, various sound, for example, bells, balls, tuning forks. It does not remove a programming, but certain frequencies cleanse crystals from low vibration in prints. 4096 hertz cleanses to purity. Coupled with conscious visualization, it removes programmings. So, a crystal may be unclean and not programmed, unclean and programmed, clean and programmed, and clean and not programmed. That's what Janan said. So I may read that again. So there are different um, um, aspects. Uh, you can have a crystal first time before it's cleans. So you can have a crystal maybe unclean and not programmed, Unclean and programmed, clean and programmed, clean and not programmed. <laughs> so, so um, well, then, then he, Jen Han went on about talking about the visualization of a pure, bright light clearing the crystal. So here is what he says. He says, do not underestimate the power of consciousness. It is the most powerful tool in the universe. The wind of consciousness brushing through a crystal clears everything that doesn't belong to its original frequency structure. It clears also emotional imprints. Consciousness is the best tool you can find. All sentient beings are able to use that power. You only need to harness it. This is obtained by training. From the center of your being, in a dynamic expansion of your field of consciousness, use the visualization of a wave of pure light clearing the crystal. Everything is clear. So that is very interesting. So what I understand, what Jenhan says, you really create this, this intention, this vision of a bright light and with your consciousness you visualize it passing brushing through the crystal like a wind yeah. i find yeah i found that amazing he also spoke about um he said about whatever method of clear clearing always couple it with conscious intention as you 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 explain uh, earlier than the when you perform uh, rituals to cleanse crystals, that's not exactly the ritual that works. It's you, it's you, the intention you put in it. So here is what Jen Han says about this, quoting him. 
regarding the device you name bulk eraser. It is working well. I know now what this device is, but always use the dynamic field of consciousness, always at the same time, for any work you may do with crystals. The emotional field, you ask, conscious visualization, using your mind's electric field will be the best method to employ. The bulk eraser device may do well, but better couple it with consciousness. The 4096 sound from the tuning fork is a good tool. Also here, couple with conscious visualization. So how, what would you add um, after this, Dan? I would add to this, uh, the, this communication with Jenhan regarding the effective ways of clearing a crystal has been an evolution. And that um, originally we were believing that the 4096 frequency that was emanating from these tuning works was uh, precise. So as we continued in our creation, we started to learn more and expand upon in narrowing down what are the main methods that are effective between not only what Dr. Marcel Vogel said, but what also what Jen Han has said, and they both corroborated on, on at least two of these methods. Marcel was unaware of the 4096 hertz ability to clear the left structure. So in, uh, in reviewing uh, <laughs> months of uh, exchanges, these are the four methods that uh, we concluded were able to, you know, clear the crystal. Um, the first meth method was the pulse breath with, and, and by the way, what Elena just said about Jen Han saying, always couple, no matter, don't depend on the device just to do it by itself. Always couple it with your consciousness in order to be effective. Um, okay, these are the four that we concluded. The first was pulse breath with consciousness, as we previously went over. Dr. Marcel Vogel used this method where you place your middle four and your thumb on the opposing facets, and you, as we showed earlier, for six-sided, this would be three times for the three axes. Jenhan added that the mind of the user must have reached a clear state of mind so that it would not project any parasitic thoughts into the crystal if the user's mind is troubled. And Jen had commented saying, yes, this is important. No clear mind, no clearing, he says. Um, the second would be a magnetic bulk eraser. Uh, now, <laughs> uh, Dr. Marcel Vogel recommended this device, which creates a powerful fluctuating magnetic field that can clear a crystal by deprogramming it, possibly in some ways similar to how this device was originally intended in the old days of magnetic uh, videotapes to erase completely, will erase the uh, magnetic domains in a, in a videotape. Typically, no more than 10 to 20 seconds of exposing the magnetic eraser against all sides of the crystals adequate to completely erase the previous image. It is safe to make physical contact with the crystal with the magnetic eraser for the greatest induc induction intensity of the magnetic field into the crystal lattice structure. Now, these are, <laughs> they don't, Radio Shack went out of business and these are very hard to find. Maybe on eBay, you might find it. So they're, they're old vintage and they don't make them hardly anymore, but you have to plug them into an AC line. Here you can see <laughs> it has a very powerful magnetic field. So um, this is not a sound oscillation, but is rather a magnetic field. So you can put it right up close to the crystal and rotate it all the way around. And it should take more than 10 to 20 seconds to clear the crystal second. Uh, 
The I third a, method. Sorry, Dan, I have is, a question. So yes. the bulky, sorry, the bulky razor is a um, very powerful magnetic field. Would something, it would be interesting to know now, would something like the DIMS device, um, which produces a very powerful magnetic field, be able to um, to uh, do the job? Well, uh, I wonder, I was It wondering. won't work the same. Okay. Because the, the DIMS device has a very powerful circular magnet on the end, which is putting out a constant magnetic field. With the uh, magnetic bulk eraser, it's being plugged into the circuit. You know, I think it's 50 hertz in Europe and 60 hertz over here. In other words, the magnetic field is going positive and negative 60 times a second. It's this ah. back and forth, going back and forth that shakes all the all the uh, shakes everything up basically, and causes the. Uh, Racing, that's how it erases the magnetic tape, is it jungles all the magnetic domain, it becomes totally clear. So a permanent magnet won't do the same effect as an alternating, fluctuating magnetic field. Brilliant. Okay, Thank number you. three <laughs> um, is brushing the uh, 4096 sound over the axis of the crystal. In other words, you brush the sound source, we found later and as we go forward that the uh tuning forks uh were not effective but uh you would take a sound device and brush it over the three jan Han said that to use the sound to brush closely over the three axes of the crystal without touching the crystal and while you were doing this to couple this once again with consciously visualizing the crystal being cleared this should take far less than a minute to complete Jen Han comment says, yes, you will feel it. When the crystal is cleared as an expansion of its presence, suddenly you will be aware that it is alive and it has a tangible presence. Okay, um, now this fourth method is completely impractical, <laughs> but it works. Uh, um, a more complex method is uh, to have a coil form that is, you have to custom make it like uh, like this one here, that uh, you can put a crystal inside of it. You have to power this with a, uh, you have to wind this in a clockwise direction and power it with 4096 from generators. You have to make this special coil, and you have to buy a function generator and, um, and it will work. <laughs> um, for most people, this, uh, this method is completely impractical, but we thought we'd include it because it is one of the methods. But we have a visual confirmation of the crystal being clear using the 4096 electromagnetic field, uh, which uh, Elena can share that, that story. Yes, absolutely. Um, so, um, um, I um, I had experienced um, uh, an attack of dissonant energy, um, and this became absorbed. I used to wear uh, crystal uh, quartz around my neck, and the um, when I received this dissonant energy attack, because I'm attacked a lot. <laughs> The quartz uh, stopped it. It just stopped it, and um, but the thing stopping it, it it caught the the, the vibration. So the the, it, the the dissonant energy uh, became absorbed within the quartz lattice structure of this this Merkaba crystal. So um, Dan suggested to me that I could reprogram, try to reprogram uh, my signal generator to a four thousand ninety six hertz cine wave signal output and um, connect it to a magnetic coil which i have and uh, so i i put each of the eight points of this merkaba crystal for 10 seconds each into the center of the magnetic coil so i happened to take a photo before and after clearing and i didn't change the the, the lighting and the environment the crystal was the same same place and uh, you can see with the photos, the dramatic change from the crystal 
who was first being darkened by the dissonant energy and uh, that it had absorbed in its lattice structure and then to being completely light and clear afterwards. And I can tell you, it was weighing lighter after there's something gone from it. So um, that was very, very interesting, Dan. And your suggestion uh, really worked. Very interesting. Yes, yeah, so we've actually got a visual confirmation that the electromagnetic field of the 4096 hertz had, had that effect. And this is not unusual from what uh, Marcel has experienced. Sometimes crystals will become with certain people or different energies. They become cloudy or dark. Uh, and with certain people, they become clear with use. You know, So there's this interesting aspect of... Um, visual indication within the crystal lattice structure actually being affected by the environment and um, it looks like that your Merkaba <laughs> took the full hit and uh, that worked out really well with your uh, signal generator yes yes it uh, it, um, it it really did yes 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 um uh, yeah Please. so We've uh, basically concluded that these four known crystal clearing methods, you know, between uh, Dr. Marcel Vogel and Jen Hanaredion, that the majority of people will no doubt use these first three methods, <laughs> method four, totally impractical. Um, and so I asked uh, Jen, you know, his thoughts on concluding of these uh four methods and um and this uh, is what uh, yeah this is what she replied um i'm quoting him now he said you summarized perfectly what we have been exchanging about in the last couple of months a virgin ground has the most powerful radiant geometry they need to become conscious of how effective is the power of manifest manifestation. It affects matter, the lattice of reality, and propagates effects into adjacent densities. All is resonance across time, matter, energy, and densities of consciousness. You see, consciousness expansion is related to the frequency rate of reality. When particles vibrate faster, the mind computes faster. Consciousness expands farther and intelligence expands with it. We see better, clearer, farther, waiting faster. The force that binds protons and electrons together is a vibration that has specific, very precise frequency rate. If you alter the frequency rate between the particles, you change the solid reality. Thus, you can heal by repairing tissues because you will repair the broken links to a, due to a dissonance of frequency. The universe stands towards, and Chen Han paused, and we said, I said, perfection. And he replied, there you have it. <laughs> because he always says, the universe stands towards perfection. <laughs> I love that. I love that, uh, Jen, the number of statements that Jen Han has <laughs> said that's so profound that uh, it's reassuring to know that, you know, the universe does have a tendency to move toward perfection, you know, as when it repairs and the med beds or anything, uh, there's this always this movement toward the more perfect, uh, you know, just like in with with water and things. But that's a, a subject. I asked Jen Han. I said, "Now, this this is really fascinating me. <laughs> you know, it's like this was something totally new to me about forty ninety six hertz having to do with uh, clearing the crystal structure, and, I, and so I asked him. I said, "What is special about the forty ninety six hertz frequency in relationship to the quartz crystal lattice structure, and why does this frequency act to clear the crystal of previous imprints?" And this is what he said. He said, 
This is a frequency rate that disassembles the bonds between the particles of lower frequency that are not in resonance ratio with a quartz lattice structure. It breaks them down. So the intrusive particles are vibrated out of the body of the quartz. The quartz regains a perfectly balanced geometrical abs absolute state of resonance. This is a profound piece of information and in understanding what is happening when, um, when these uh, sound waves of 4096 are being oscillated upon the, the quartz crystal lattice structure. What's happening is that this, this structure is, as Jen Han said, it's like the, the purest structure in, in in the universe and it is directly connected to source and so when you oscillate the structure anything of lesser nature just can't hang on <laughs> it uh, it gets vibrated right out of the loudest structure i um uh, i asked him uh if uh well how about 4096 hertz uh coming through a speaker he said the speaker must be perfectly operational without any sound interference dissonance there's yes but not the best method and then uh what we've done is uh in reviewing these four clearing methods was practical and effective you know the pulse breath the magnetic eraser, the 4096 sound, and, and the totally useless coil. <laughs> the one method which would seem to be the most practical and simple for the majority of Terrans would be number three, the uh, 4096 sound and emanating from a tuning fork. Now, this is an evolution of understanding that Elaine and I were doing. We were under the assumption that um, the 490s hertz was as you hit the tuning fork like that uh was going to be right at 4096 hertz but what happened was before elaine and i decided to recommend the solution um i measured the frequency of of a common <laughs> tuning fork you know a ten dollar variety on amazon and then i ordered a very expensive one that was from a reputable company that you know assured the frequency was correct and actually the expensive one was even worse than than the uh, the common one um the frequencies i measured uh as much as 10 to 17 hertz off of resonant frequency you know i i was assuming in order to resonate the quartz lattice that the frequency would need to be very precise in order to be effective. I asked Jen Han, is that true? And uh, Jen Han responded. Yeah, yes. And uh, Jen Han uh, responded to this, this question. So he said, Thorhan, his brother, Thorhan shared with me already Elena's concern regarding this question. Your tuning forks seem to vary in tune with the frequency of the planet and the atmospheric conditions. This is because, and it must only be the reason, the metal they are made of is not appropriate for the use. Steel would approach the results regarding my researches, but not very effective as frequency generator. Elena told me her tuning forks are in aluminium. I do not believe this is the best metal. Apologies if this point wasn't mentioned in our last conversation. However, the frequency must be precise, you understand, to disassemble the particles' bonds. When you use frequencies, be exact. End of quote. Yes, that is such an important uh, point John Han made. That you can't have a... It has to be precise it has to be exactly on the frequency i said to jen han i said well if this is true then we will need to seek a replacement 4096 hertz sound source you know a replacement for the tuning fork that can give a more exact precise frequency you mentioned that if using a speaker that 
the speaker must be perfectly operational without sound interference or dissonance. I suggested a possible tuning fork sound generation replacement comes to mind that can generate a more closely uh, correct 4096 hertz frequency. I said that practically everyone on our planet has a mobile phone which can run a sound generator application to generate the 4096 hertz sound through its electrodynamic speaker, which could be held close to the crystal. This could be, a, could this be a solution for an accurate 4096 hertz sound generation? And, mm -hmm. you know, as you uh, can see here, here's a, um, here's, here's a sound application and you can probably hear that. <laughs> um, and what you would do is you would put the crystal on the phone, but you would uh, need to put it in airplane mode. And I'll, let, uh, I'll let discuss that. Yes, this is what, what Jan Han um, said to the, this question. So, quote, not the best, my friend, but it works. Hold it longer next to the crystal. You can place your crystal on your phone, but at this condition, it must not be sending harmful electromagnetic radiations. Elena asks if putting the phone in airplane mode is okay. I do not know what this is. <laughs> Thorhan answered, he says, yes, this is a sensible thing to do, and it is working. He knows best in Terran communication systems than I do. <laughs> and of course yes airplane mode yeah you don't want the wi-fi or the cell transmitting uh harmful electromagnetics when you're doing this it has to be in the airplane mode um you know in consideration of these different methods um you have different considerations uh pulse breath, breath the with intention will clear the crystal but if you're not in a uh, clear state of mind and have troubled thoughts in the back of your mind those parasitic thoughts will be imprinted in the clearing process and the crystal will not be fully cleared so it will work but your mind needs to be absolutely clear for it to be i know marcel used this method uh considerably uh, he, he really relied on the magnetic bulk eraser for for serious erasing. But the uh, old, they're vintage now. These magnetic bulk erasers are becoming harder to find, and they require that you plug them into an AC outlet, which isn't always convenient. And uh, so, uh, and then we have the magnetic coil. We won't even discuss that. <laughs> it's totally impractical. Um, and so then we come to the tuning fork. The tuning forks uh, we have tested have considerable inaccuracy and give to give a precise frequency and therefore are ineffective when resonating the quartz crystal lattice. Jen Han has made it clear that in order to disassemble the bonds between the particles of low frequency and the quartz crystal lattice structure, that the frequency needs to be precisely the exact frequency of 4096 hertz. This is able to be obtained using a metal tuning fork. Yeah, this is unable to be obtained using a metal tuning fork as the frequency varies according to the temperature. When it's warm, the metal expands and the frequency becomes lower. When it's cold, it contracts and the frequency will go higher. In consideration of all this, um, we have uh, some science teams we're working with. Uh, one of our science team members, uh, Kent Noonan, He's an electronics design engineer who is currently working on the construction of a crystal frill generator based on Jen Han's instructions. Um, consider this issue with the tuning forks and that Jen Han stated that only the exact frequency in order to be effective decided to specially engineer into a small handheld sound emitting device using a precise crystal controlled oscillator that is accurate 
to within five thousandths of a hertz. This is very, very precise. Um, with power as a piezoelectric sound transduced for, for total carrying imprint than quartz crystal lattice structure. Um, they're in production. <laughs> um, here you can hear the sound. The um, Jen Han has instructed previously if you used a sound device such as this, you would hold this device close to the crystal and brush over the um, three axes of the crystal for uh, about five or 10 seconds each and then rotate and then five or 10 seconds on the next and five or 10 seconds. And that will completely clear the crystal. Um, we uh, were wondering whether or not this device that was engineered could be uh, could be effective, um, and so we uh, <laughs> petitioned a off planet report. Yes, uh, sorry. Um, Jen Han was at the time moving to Mars to a new to work with a new team of terraformers, so it wasn't available that day. When I tried it, I tried a little device with a crystal and to clear crystal. So I did it very carefully, but I wanted to do it uh, while being in contact and communication with Jen Han that he could uh, measure that if it worked, but he wasn't available. So Thoran told me, why wouldn't you contact Una? Um, she's available. She's Altian. The Altians work with crystals. They are very good at that. So I said, what a good idea. So I contacted Una. And I once I had a contact with her, I asked her if she would like to uh, check the crystal that I was holding in one my other hand to see if the frequency changed and if something was happening. So we did that. And this is what she replied, what she said just after. And I, I thought it was uh, really cool. This is what Una said. So, um, okay, she said, she said the frequency is correct, despite a very fine error that doesn't affect the purpose at all. She said she felt the crystal was cleared to base zero and invigorated. Not only it clears it, she said, but it also revitalizes the crystal and makes it operational for work. She said this is a satisfactory result and congratulates the maker of the device. So that was interesting. It worked. Oh, not only took it to base zero, but actually, interestingly, uh, Onan's words were, it actually revitalized the crystal. Unexpected. Um, the little small error, by the way, I, shared with our engineer friend and uh, he has it was a slight distortion in the sine wave that was coming out he has corrected that so it's as effective or even more so <laughs> now so uh we're grateful to kent for engineering that as a as an option uh along with these other options of ways to clear the crystal and um we um, were very grateful to the pioneering work of Dr. Marcel Vogel, who originally pioneered this uh, science of consciousness interfacing with a crystal, and to be able to get confirmation and expand upon the, that knowledge of clearing a crystal, because you can't do a work with a crystal. It, it's like an artist starting out with a dirty canvas you you have to have a clear canvas in order to paint your painting and so before you do any work the crystal lattice structure needs to be absolutely clear and then the work that we're going to be covering in the in the following classes uh, will be able to be far more effective
Absolutely. And um, tell us a bit, if, if, can you tell us in, in a few words um, how these devices are being at the moment perfected and will be available for everyone to buy? Yes, our our friends at uh, Crystal Light and Sound uh, will be carrying them. They're making them as affordably as they can. Um, and uh, it's a... Uh, the masterpiece of engineering that Ken has put together and a very convenient device. Uh, it doesn't take very long and completely clear the crystal. But, you know, you can also use a magnetic bulk eraser and you can, uh, if your mind is clear, you can clear it with your consciousness um, and, um, and forget about the magnetic coil. <laughs> it's uh, too impractical. So these yes. are the methods... That we have over months of exchanges have consolidated down to the most effective methods in order to clear the quartz crystal out of structure. And here we are. So by now you all have maybe uh, picked your crystal and you maybe got it and now we, you can enjoy trying uh, these methods of uh, clearing your favorite crystal and all the other ones you have in the house and just see, pay attention to their spark, their light, their weight as well. Um, it is very noticeable when a crystal is charged, it's, it's heavier and when it's clear and totally pure, it's lighter and pay attention to the changes and you will be amazed. And um, we will meet you for soon the next class where we will go further into guiding you into using the crystals now we will talk about the applications and a lot of other things <laughs> <laughs> well thank you yeah, dan very excited very honored to do this with you and um educating the people of our planet in order to use these uh, technologies coupled with consciousness to um affect uh affect our reality affect healing on ourselves others the planet um and and much more see you for the next class everyone mm -hmm.